Hi guys, my name is Daniel Hampton and I'm with ITNewsYouCanUse.com and their sponsor ComputerXDFW.com and today I'm going to show you guys how to set up a basic Trixbox 2.8 installation. We're not going to go over everything but we are going to, we're going to cover all the basics you need to get up and running and if you guys have any additional questions that I don't cover in today's uh, setup video, please feel free to send me an email. Um, you can find my email address on computerxdfw.com and just just send submit a support ticket and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Okay, so if you take a look here, you can see where we are. Um, let's see, we're in full screen mode. Let's go ahead and go to the IP address of our server, which is, by the way, um, let's just go over a brief overview of what I've done so far. What I did was install the generic Trixbox ISO, which can be downloaded. Uh, just Google Trixbox CE and you can find many, many download mirrors for the current release which is about two years old now but it's still very robust and functions very very well on this particular server is in a production environment so I am showing you something that actually works and is running so um, anyway I've, I've downloaded and installed that onto a, about a 12 year old computer just an old desktop computer that they had sitting around it doesn't need a whole lot of hardware to make this thing run so I'd recommend at least a RAID 1 setup so that you can make sure that if you lose any data um, you're just losing the configuration which you can set to back up to an FTP server somewhere which I'll show you how to do at any rate let's go ahead and type in the IP address alright now it's going to take us to the basic user mode um, which is what you'll give your customers once you have these things set up but it doesn't have any configuration, any real configuration options. So we're going to switch to the maintenance mode. And um, I've already put in the username and password, which is why it's not prompting me. But just so you know, when you first set this up, um, your default username and password is going to be maint, M-A-I-N-T, and then just password, the word password, all lowercase. And that'll get you into this mode the screen that I'm showing you here. Now you will have to set up port forwarding on your router and firewall in order to make this accessible. Um, I'm assuming you know how to do that and that should be fairly common sense for those of you who are going to be setting up a PBX and even know what a PBX is. So I'm not going to cover that today. All right. Um, as you can see we're in the system status screen. This shows you just a brief overview of how your setup's running. It'll show you if your capacity on the hard drives is getting filled up. Um, just very basic information, but information that is very useful, nevertheless. Shows you your host name, which you'll need for setting up um, soft phones, things of that nature. Shows how many SIP peers you have online, offline, unmonitored. Um, everything's fairly self-explanatory from what you can see here and you will see something very similar to this even when you first install and um, log in for the first time your packages page this is where you're going to go in order to install modules that you can use with Trixbox there are so many of them um, and most of them come most of the ones that you're going to see today come installed by default I did have to configure and install a few things that weren't in the vanilla Trixbox 2.8.04 installation. Um, I will go over a few of those with us today. So if you don't see it in your system settings, which is where we're going right now, PBX settings, if you don't see it, that's because you need to install it in the packages section. Okay, So it's fairly, fairly s simple to do. All right. Now your module, we're at our system status screen right now, and that's going to show us 
if we have any connections. You're not going to have any to start out with because you won't have any registered trunks. But we are going to show you how to do that. So this will show your uptime and it will show you your server status. This is very good to know. Uh, if you can't remote in using SSH, you'll probably want to use PuTTY okay, to, do, to remote in using SSH. Um, if, you, if you have to do any configuration option, configuration of any of the uh, files on the server, if, you, if you're going to be playing around with the Linux installation and, and offloading music files and things of that nature, um, SSH is a must. So you need your SSH server for functioning. Your web server, obviously, it has to be functioning in order for us to be in this GUI. So that's kind of redundant for it to tell us that. My SQL is the back end that this is running under. Um, op panel, that's the first thing that you saw when we logged in as just a basic user. And then asterisk is the um, the system that Trixbox GUI is running on top of. Okay, as you can see, the load average is very low, 0 0.02. I mean, this is a Pentium 3 that this is running on. So from that, you should be able to see this is extremely low resource. Um, and this is, by the way, this is a call center. So they're on this thing all the time, 24-7, and it, it's still, it's just very, very low use. Right now, it's actually not in use, um, which is why I'm able to make this video. But for the most part, as you can see, this is just a very efficient system. Okay, dial plan injection. We're not going to go over very heavily here. Um, and yes, I did skip module admin for a reason. Uh, I'll come back to it here in a little while. But anyway, um, module admin, it's just your basic, everything that you have installed, whether it's enabled or not. You don't do a whole lot here. So, um, I mean, you can check for updates and you can upload modules that you download. Um, there will be a few occasions where you need to do this. For example, if we scroll down, let's see, iSymphony. Okay, this is a module that I downloaded and configured. Um, it didn't wind up working for me, so uh, I stopped using it. But that's where you do it. If you need to upload a module, here's where it is, module admin. Dial plan injection. If you don't know what that is, you don't need to be messing with it. Okay, dial plan injection, essentially whenever specific extensions are dialed, um, you can put in codes here that are going to allow you to do different things. Um, this is not a basic, this is an advanced feature, so I'm not going to go over that today. Extensions, we'll come back to. Trunks is going to be the very first thing that you're going to want to configure after you install the modules that you need to function. So let's go to trunks. Okay, as you can see, there are two trunks set up here. Each one is performing a specific function. One's so that uh, this particular client can get out, uh, can call a location outside of their local calling area, but show up with a local number. Um, there are various ways to accomplish that, and I have posted on the Trixbox CE forums and told you how to do that with a CBON trunk. Um, and I've also talked about how to do it with Nextiva as well. Um, you do something called a diversion header. Anyway, um, email me if you have questions about that. This is going to be what you're normally going to be adding. Uh, Zap, IAX2, Enum, and I mean, all of these are different options that you have available to you, but the most generic run-of-the-mill trunk that you're going to see set up and that you're going to need to set up is going to be a SIP trunk. So let's go there. Okay. And your outbound caller ID, that should be self-explanatory. Um, it's going to be the number that people see when you're calling. So you're not going to put in the company name here. You need to put in a uh, an, an actual number. The reason why that's important, a lot of your SIP providers aren't actually going to allow you to call through out through their system if you don't have the specific number that is registered with them. So you can't just put anything here. You have to put the number that is actually registered through the system. Now, Nextiva is a company that allows you to set up whatever you want as your outbound caller ID. So that's useful um, for some of you. 
Um, okay. Never override caller ID. Most people are, are going to leave that unchecked, but okay. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and set up the things that just a basic idea for you, okay? So. All right, so let's go ahead and put our caller ID there. Your maximum channels, you're gonna get that information from your provider, but uh, a, a normal number, let's see. Let's go ahead and put in six. Um, for a small tricks box installation, that's, that's about right most of the time. And in this particular case, they have the availability of, I think, oh, close to 60. Depends how many PRIs you have, primary rate interfaces. You can monitor trunk failures, which is important for most people. They want to know when a trunk fails. So if you click enable there and then set up an administrative email for, for the Trixbox to notify you, if something fails, it'll send you a message. And you know what? People forget oftentimes to pay their bills <laughs> and a trunk will fail because the SIP provider is taking it offline because of failure to pay. And rather than getting nasty phone calls from your uh, clients and asking why they can't make phone calls, uh, this is a better way to be notified. Your outgoing dial, dial rules. In the trunk set that you see over there to the right that are set up and configured, I can't show you those for security for security reasons, but the dial rules are actually empty in both of those. And the reason for that is for trunk dialing rules, you're basically you're adding numbers um, to whatever outgoing number is being dialed. So you most most of the time you're not actually going to be putting anything there. You can put an outbound dial prefix, um, like a country code for example if you're in the US you could put one so that your people don't have to dial one um, or I mean you could put all kinds of things there now most of the time in a trunk setup you're not gonna put anything in the entire outgoing dial rules section what you're gonna be concerned with is the peer details in outgoing settings so let's move down to that okay you're gonna name your trunk whatever you want that that's not really that important as you can see at the top we have two ones named C beyond ones next 